Welcome back to Behind the Business Chat. Every business has a story, and I'm setting out to learn the stories behind some of Chattanooga's most loved businesses. This week, I had the wonderful opportunity to speak with the co-owner of Be Caffeinated. Be Caffeinated is a local coffee shop that's continually growing and working hard to love people as they go. Their coffee's pretty good, too, which they've even started roasting in-house. All right, let's meet the owner. Hello, my name is Christopher Wood. I'm one of the owners at the Caffeinated New Wave Coffee and N7 Coffee Labs. I am the paperwork guy, the glorified business dude. I noticed, like on your website, I noticed that Doug Lee is mentioned. Is he? <laughs> yeah, he's is our he my like... business partner. Okay, yeah. so you guys are co-owners then? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so we own, so we have a couple of investors in the Caffeinated, but we are the two managing partners. Okay. He's the He's the restaurant experience guy, and I'm the academic background and business guy. Business. And with our powers combined, we, we complement each other's strengths yeah. and weaknesses. Yeah, that's very smart because mm-hmm. that's what I've found in my history. I've, I've worked restaurant a little bit, and I've seen that. It's usually like the restaurant service people are weak on the business side. Mm-hmm. And then vice versa, the yep. business people are a little weak sure. on the customer service side. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess if you want to give me a brief story of like behind the business, how you guys started. Yeah. And, um, y'all haven't really been around for very long, right? We're actually about to have our two year anniversary right. on uh, July 8th, I believe. Okay. Uh, so we started our first location in the Red Bank, I guess one year and 11 months ago. <laughs> long story short, Doug and I were roommates and he came home one day and he was like, hey, let's do a snow cone stand. And I was like, heck yeah, let's do it. So we kind of had some fun with an alcoholic snow cone trailer called Bro Cones. That was our first business venture together in South Mississippi. Uh, And then a couple months into it, we were like, let's let's get bigger than this. And I had heard someone, my manager when I was working at McDonald's said that 70-ish percent of their sales were through the drive-thru. And I was like, why would you have a lobby if all your sales are through the drive-thru? So we're kind of like, what what else is like that? There was this place where we're from in South Mississippi called Java Mo's Coffee Company. It's a drive-through business model of coffee shop. We both got jobs there, worked there about eight to 10 months. I learned the inner workings, got, became friends with the owner. Uh, he's actually one of our non-managing partners. So then we moved up here and about 10 months after moving here, we opened the Red Bank location. Oh wow. Um, yeah, it was just me and Doug for a really long time, just working six days a week. My parents and wife kind of gave us off Saturdays every now and then, but we were just doing the grind. And we had our first round of employees a couple months in, and then now we're up to 30 employees in two locations. And we started roasting a couple months ago, and yeah, it's been a blast. What brought y'all to New Chattanooga then, from Mississippi? My parents have lived here about nine or 10 years. And so when I was in college, this was the place we went during like spring break or Christmas or summer. So it was kind of the like the vacation spot. And I got married to my wife and we were like, why not just live where you go to vacation? Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I, I love Chattanooga. The small business scene is amazing. It's beautiful, there's so much to do. So we moved here and kind of just copy and pasted the model that we were familiar with and kind of tweaked the things we wanted to and kept the things we wanted to. Chattanooga is just great. Yeah. Another question, which you kind of went into, but why coffee? You know, yeah. You're wanting to find something that had to drive, through, you know, have that drive-through concept. But there's a sexy answer to that, but not sexy. Answer. <laughs> uh, the sexy answer is it's fun, it's cool, mm-hmm. it makes people happy, uh, which is kind of one of our, I guess, goals. Be happy, be caffeinated. So it just seems the most fun. We actually weren't hugely into coffee when we started this, or at least got jobs at job in those. Uh, we've progressively gotten more and more involved and interested in it. Like when we started roasting, I ran mm-hmm. the Coffee Roasters Companion, which is like the intro book, and it's insanely interesting. Mm-hmm. It's basically just chemistry, but you right. get to make coffee, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, the not sexy answer is it's a good business, like do a, like a McDonald's or a Central Park where you can do coffee. Coffee's more fun, so right. that's that's the less or the more mundane answer is. It just seemed it sounded more fun. Yeah. And then it's just the cool and fun.
design environment. So then you just kind of started with coffee just really from the business perspective is yeah. really kind of how you got there, not so much from the passion side of it, but yeah. as you developed, you kind of grew a passion for it. Yeah. That's why I'm assuming that's why you started decided to get into roasting too. Yeah, so I think there's also a sexy and non sexy answer to those, but I think the passion has grown since we started. Uh, at the end of the day though, I see our business as a medium for what we really want to do, which is creating a really good work environment for our baristas. Be happy, be caffeinated is our like slogan, but it's also like my why. I just want people to be happy. I want them to feel fulfilled and valued. Um, when we started this, our goal was to create a place where we would want to work if we were the baristas. So that's kind of drives our business and our decisions. So. Coffee is a good medium for that. It brings in people that are excited and want to do cool things. And then our goal is to make it the best environment possible for those people. So, do I care about coffee? Yeah, it's, am I passionate about it? Yes. Could it have been something else? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, I just the goal is to create that work environment, not necessarily to serve coffee. Yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, it's about the people, not the product. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and, and the great thing is, like, the, mo the more successful we are at making a great work environment for our people, the more our customers are happy. Mm -hmm. Because it's very, very obvious when someone is excited and loves their job, and that just rolls over to the customers. And so we're very, very employee focused, and then that in turn means that we're customer focused because of the, the rollover. Yeah, it's like a domino effect. Mm -hmm. it's, if one of the briefs is having a bad day, then it might have cause the customer to have a bad day because yes. being ill-treated or whatever. Yeah, just exactly. Kind of yeah. Down. Yeah. yeah, I really appreciate that because, like I said, I've worked in a restaurant before <laughs> and and most of the time it's about, you know, making the money instead of, you know, like, oh, we need to make this much money. And that is what's hard about service industry is you can't focus on money. It is not exactly. a money-making business. Yep. It's, if you want to make money, Find a service industry, yeah. <laughs> like if you want to well, make big dollars, and that leads into the other question you asked why do we get into roasting? And so, uh, the way to make more money is vertical integration. Mm -hmm. Basically, if we have to buy something that, to make our stuff, if we can make it ourselves, it makes it cheaper, right? Um, so, we had a really good opportunity to bring on a really experienced roaster who's from the same town we're from, okay. and that uh, so Doug knew from childhood, and so we kind of jumped on the opportunity and created a new way of coffee with Luke and it was partially selfish on the business end because we wanted to you know save money and mm -hmm. be able to kind of have our own product but also it's just it was a really really fun opportunity to work with someone that we already had very similar values and already really trusted because it's who we were already working with in that priest and so it was very seamless transition working with him in both roles so it worked out extremely well. And that's the other thing is, I always say everything in life is about balance. Yeah. So the same thing with business. It's like, yeah, you want to treat your employees right. You want to give them what they deserve. But at the same time, you need the money coming in in order to do that. Yeah. So you do have to kind of yeah. lean between the two. Yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, we still have to pay our bills. But exactly. if we can do it where everyone's happy and everyone wins. Yeah. Which. I will be honest, I was shocked that you guys opened this location. Like, I remember, that's why I was like, I knew you guys hadn't been around for that long. So I remember seeing the billboards mm -hmm. in Red Bank right yep. before you opened up that store. And then, what? Well, I the guess billboards were actually it. like six months into it. Okay, yeah. so it must have been, I must have been late seeing it. Because yeah. I didn't, I don't drive through that part of town. Yeah, so no, that's it, why. It, there's no reason to go there if you don't have a reason to go there. Right, like, yeah. I mean, the thrift store and the Dollar General and us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the billboard, I think, I mean, that's what got me there, I think. Awesome. And then even then, I was struggling to find the place, too, so yeah. I was like, there's a, there's a coffee place right here? Yeah. Yeah. Just because it's a little, yeah, I wasn't nice. expecting it to be like an old Central Park but, building. Yeah. Like. <laughs> exactly. Why the, you know, expanding and getting a new location, like, so quickly? Was yeah. it just to, I guess you were in a place well enough that you could go ahead and make that move, and then just kind of expand your presence? And, yeah, so this was actually our third location, technically. Mm -hmm. We opened up on Chat State's campus right, the Friday before the COVID shutdown was happening. Right. Uh, so <laughs> Perfect timing. It was, it was awesome. <laughs> uh, but we'll be back in August okay. on Chat State's campus. They've been very, very gracious to us and 
they, they're excited to work with us, so we'll be back. And But we had already we purchased all that equipment. Um, we tried making it work during COVID. We closed down for a couple months and reopened, and we were doing like five tickets a day, and we were like, this isn't gonna work. So at that point, that was when we started having the conversations with Luke about starting a roaster. So we were like, okay, we'll, we'll shut down the Chat State location and we'll open a roaster. And then someone was like, why don't we add a drive through on the roaster? I'm like, oh, that's such a good idea. <laughs> uh, so we stopped looking for a roaster and we started looking for a roaster with a drive through. Mm -hmm. And so we actually, this was our third or fourth letter of intent building that we had. Mm -hmm. We'd done one over on Brainerd Road. That's the old, it's like the first drive through pharmacy in the nation. It's an old Spanish insurance company. Mm -hmm. And then we were, We've been in talks with the old Taco Bell on Signal Mountain, mm -hmm. and then Chicken South Chick was supposed to go in, and it wasn't. So, uh, but then one day I was just driving around and saw this building. Like, Holy cow! Like, how did we not think of it? So yeah. we're able to work out a deal, and it already had the drive-through, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. Currently, the the drive-through coffee shop in North Shore, which is super yeah. exciting. So it was a roaster that we had to drive through onto. It doesn't necessarily seem like that because the roasting didn't get to start until like four months after this. Yeah. yeah, that's why I thought it was like, oh, yeah. they're adding a location. I thought the intent was to get closer downtown. Well, it's always so. fun. Yeah, and we're always looking for the next spot because Doug and I are, we're kind of in it for the long haul and are mm -hmm. looking to scale and have fun. Yeah. But yeah, it worked out really well and the roaster was really fun. We finally got it going and now we're doing all of our own coffee. And no, there wasn't really anyone that messaged us saying like, your new coffee sucks. So, yeah. and our goal was to make the transition as little change as possible. Because we were obviously already using really good coffee with Matt Reese Espresso and Bella Madrid, so we just didn't want shock customers. Yeah. Which I think it succeeded. So I, I agree that it did, as as one of those customers. Yeah. <laughs> because I did, I usually got espresso drinks. Is what mm -hmm. I, I'm speaking in past tense, but I still have to go there. <laughs> yeah. But I usually get espresso drinks when I you know go to the Red Bank location. And when y'all announced that you were finally selling your own roast and everything, I was like, well, I need to try it back. Because I always just get from various local, I always buy local coffee, that's yeah. my thing. And so like during the week, that's what I drink. Yeah. And so I was like, well, I need to try this one, it's a new one. And I was like, I don't know, they're saying they haven't roasted before. And <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I, I have. Doug and I have. I'm like, <laughs> right. Yeah. So I'm like, I, I have like, high expectations because of the product that you already yeah. had yeah. but then I'm like I don't know how this is gonna play out you know so <laughs> and then I was blown away I was like oh this is actually really good <laughs> Glad to hear it. that's great yeah Luke's yeah. been roasting for like nine years so he's he's the smart money where we just do all of the grunt work for him and right we're like yeah. what what can you know how do we make you happy it's, it's going really well which is very wise because yeah you don't want to <laughs> if you've never roasted before oh, yeah, like no. you said no. I might have ruined the whole business, I don't know. <laughs> so you were talking about scaling, mm -hmm. and so I guess your plan is to have other additional locations? Are you thinking like, I don't know if you're thinking about going into the franchise world or keeping it all? If you're thinking, are you thinking that big of money? <laughs> yeah, so. Or are you trying to keep it local, personal, kind of? We've definitely already had these conversations with ourselves. Uh, if we ever franchise, which, you know, fingers crossed, we have reached the ability to do that. If we ever did, we would be very selective on who right. would do that. I mean, at this point, it would have to be either one of our baristas that's kind of just, mm -hmm. like, done really well and just wants to do their own somewhere, or just someone that we, like, drill into. Half of what makes people come back and enjoy our stuff is because we, from what I've seen at least, it's because we care about our customers and make them like we remember their orders and we make them happy and feel good. And that's not something you can really like, you can't franchise right. love of people. Yeah. <laughs> you can franchise the product, but the product isn't what makes us who we are. Yeah. Maybe one day, but for the foreseeable future, you know, we'll, we'll be handling it all ourselves yeah. as, as much as possible. So our interview and hiring paradigm is we don't hire experience or talent, we hire personality. Because you can teach anyone to be a barista, but you can't teach them to be a good person or to right. care. So like, we can have someone interviewing that's like the best barista in the world and has done this or that, but if they don't seem to align with our values or purpose, then we'll move on. 
to a 19 year old that is excited to interact with people. I think that's part of why I've been successful is because like, it's, yeah. it's, the, it's the people part. Yeah. yeah. So parking for here, I notice the parking garage says like first floor is customers only, but then a lot of them are reserved for specific businesses. Yeah. I guess there's not a way for you to really reserve spots for those places there. No, but first and third floors are good to park for anyone, my customers. The uh, second floor is only for the people who live in the apartments right here. But the garage just opened back up like two days ago. Half of it was closed. There was a dumpster fire in the garage half of it collapsed. Uh, so it's, we've been like five months to where half of it's been closed off. Normally, first floor is good. A guy shows up and takes money around four or five every day. That works for the guy that owns the building. But that's to get up to the second and third floors. All the street parking on the roads are good. Across the street from us is reserved for those shops right there until after like five or six. There's, it's clearly marked on signs. Generally parking shouldn't be too bad now with the garage. Yeah, that's always something I look out for because I'm one of those cheap people that I'm like, if yeah. I have to park downtown, it would be free. Yeah, but yeah also the garage is free those, you know, most of the time. So. I'm also one of those people that I'm like, I hope my car is there when I get back. Yes. <laughs> it's like, I don't yes. know if that was a legal parking spot. <laughs> yeah. Or at least there's not like a $20 ticket on it. Yeah. yeah, which actually that did happen to me. Down by Main Street one time, I mm. parked and I think the meter was like blank or didn't say something right and I was confused as to because you know there's different times of the yeah. meters around mm -hmm. and so I was like looking at other people never look at what other people are no. doing <laughs> all the people around me weren't paying for yeah. parking and so I was like I don't need to pay gone for an hour come back and I, that's when I had a parking ticket I was like are you serious <laughs> so I noticed that you all started like a library mm -hmm. um, Great. so what what inspired that yeah so we started with a lending dvd library or movies and then got into the books basically i'm a nerd the manager here is a nerd and his job before here was a librarian and so he's passionate about all that it's actually funny we, we our original idea was just to have one of those tiny lending libraries mm -hmm. and then so my business partner doug is pretty good at wood stuff so we just went all in, just made a humongous library shelf, and we worked with a local bookstagrammer. Do you know the world of bookstagram? Yeah. It's yeah. so <laughs> fascinating, uh, but she's she's been a, a really nice, consistent regular for us for a while. So we've, we've become pretty good friends, and so she has a lot of books that she gets sent for free, so she brought us like two boxes full of books that she oh, didn't wow. need, so she helped us stock up the shelf, and uh, we had a bunch of other donations from employees and such. So it's fully stocked now. Our movies are fully stocked by some people that work at the Chattanooga Theater Center. Gordon Inman is the main guy that's helped us with that. Uh, he's a talented actor and clarinetist and just a really cool all-around guy. So we're nerds and we want to permeate nerdy. Right. <laughs> we're also in the works to work with Infinity Flux to have okay. a comic and board game show. Mm -hmm. We love those guys and are excited to work. Yeah. Now that you're mentioning local, other local businesses that you yeah. like to collaborate with, you probably have a love and a care for the community and wanting to support other small businesses. So my undergrad is in entrepreneurship. Uh, so it's a business administration degree. I didn't degree know that was a thing. It, some, some colleges <laughs> have it, some don't. Uh, I started out as a polymer science major, which is basically like fancy chemistry. And two years in, after organic, I was like, I don't want to work in a lab my entire life. I switched to business, didn't look back. Entrepreneurship sounded cool. It's basically like a video game or board game, but in real life. You know? Right. Uh, and so I got that and then got my master's in business, and that's kind of my academic background. And so when I was a graduate assistant at Southern Miss in Hattiesburg, I got to work with the, it was, it's called the Southern Entrepreneurship Program. And basically, it's this guy, he's the coolest guy ever. Uh, he's my basically life role model uh, and his job is to teach high school students across the state of Mississippi about financial literacy, economics, entrepreneurship, all of that cool fun stuff. And so he has one or two graduate assistants every year and it's those two people's job to do all of these events for thousands of students and part of that is working with local businesses that are panelists and they work with the students and some of the time they like get the high school students themselves to create school-based enterprises and they make businesses in their own high school and run them and 
Wow. Uh, it's so cool. So that's kind of where my really big love for local businesses started is because I got to work with these amazing people who were doing these cool stuff. And so when we started Be Caffeinated, day one our goal was to work with as many small businesses as possible because it's more fun, more people win, the product is almost always better. I mean, someone is putting their like heart and soul into it instead of it being you know, automatically created or something. Right. You can do more cool, creative stuff. So now, if you go to our website, we have a list of all the local businesses we work with, and it's like... Yeah, I noticed that. It's coming up on 20, I think. And it's just, it's yeah. fun and exciting. You know, we have our give back program every couple of weeks where we choose a local nonprofit, and we do like a profit share on Thursdays. And so the manager here, Tyler, he's in charge of that because he has a huge philanthropic volunteerism side to him. So we're just trying to work with cool, fun people that are also trying to push their dream forward and if we can help and uh, have better products in the meantime, like why wouldn't we? Right, right. Yep. Yeah, it's so much better to have. If you're going to have a store and you need products to sell, either you can make them yourself or you can buy them commercially and yep. it'll be cheaper, but at the same time you can have better products mm -hmm. and support local at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, so like the chai we use, for example, is from China and Tea, which is a local maker, and she buys most of her spices from Alchemy Spice, which right. is another local person. So if you buy right. a cup of chai from us, you're supporting three local businesses all at the same time, and that's just really interesting yeah. to me. Like, I think it's so yeah. fascinating. And New the same thing. Yeah. Because I know she, I, I spoke with her before, too. Yeah. 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 It's like, she likes to, you know, shop local and get stuff mm -hmm. from the farmer's market and stuff with yeah. her ingredients for her. Her macaroons, and, yeah. and then of course she sells them at all the different local shops. Yeah, so. and I would love partnering with her. Yeah, I actually had some of hers like an hour ago. Yeah, uh, the cereal flavor one. That's oh, yeah, that's the one um, really she had me try yeah. when I spoke with her. I had the fruity yeah. pebbles and the cinnamon toast crunch. Yeah, yeah, cinnamon toast crunch one of my favorite. Yeah. One of my favorite cereals. Uh, so I was excited for that. Maybe want to go pour a bowl of cereal. Honestly. Exactly. <laughs> that's one of the things. I mean, you kind of already touched on that, but mm -hmm. like how Chattanooga is very like small business minded oh, yeah. and and like all the small businesses pretty much want to support one another and mm -hmm. yeah. it's cool yeah and even the coffee scene is amazing like mm -hmm. you know objectively speaking we are competitors right all coffee shops in town but the collaboration and the community that exists is, is awesome like for example, I just put in a huge t-shirt order with Burlap today, mm -hmm. which, you know, they're a t-shirt printer first, but yeah. they also open their coffee shop. Right. But like, so we love working with them, we were working with Matt Priest and Della for forever, mm -hmm. Good Men's, uh, Sleepy Head, you know, you name it, and yeah. everyone is so supportive, and whereas in a lot of towns, they would feel like they had to be cutthroat or standoffish. I feel like a lot of the Chattanooga scene is supportive instead, which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it is hard, especially if you're coming from a business mindset, to think mm -hmm. like, like you said, they're technically they're all your competition, yeah. but at the same time, you gotta think of the customers. The customer, most likely, customers are not gonna be loyal to your shop only. Mm -hmm. Most likely, they're gonna go to those other shops too. Well, and there's, I mean, there's how many people in Chattanooga? There's a lot. There's mm -hmm. enough for there's everyone enough to, go around. <laughs> to be completely max successful at all times and still not, you know, yeah, compete with each other. Yeah. 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 It's a really hard mindset to get out of it. this like yeah. business is like I must mm -hmm. destroy everything. But right. it's, it's not fun and it's not true. Yeah. And what they say also about this, you know, like don't go into a saturated market. So when you say, oh, I'm gonna open up a coffee shop in Chattanooga, <laughs> that is a saturated market. <laughs> the drive through wasn't as much when we started. Right. Now it's getting there. It is. With places like, you know, Little Beans, Pete's, yeah. Beers, the Oaks. Yeah, pizza. I guess pizza is the only other drive-through downtown, right? It's the only one that I know of. Yeah, Sunnyside's right on the other side. Oh, well, actually, that's true. It's on Signal. And then the one on uh, towards St. Elmo's. And Broad Street, yeah. right? But yeah, they're kind of out, out of downtown. Yeah, I guess yeah. pizza is. I think pizza is yeah. the only one that's like downtown, and you're the only one North Shore. Too. Yep. You know, with our drive-through here, the one in Red Bank, we have a drive-through on each side, mm -hmm. so we can have two lines going. Here, there's only one. And we can get like two or three cars on the road backed up. And so we developed what we call the Chick-fil-A method. We have the handheld square terminals. Yeah. And so we have someone pop out in the line and they take the orders in the line. And so just logistically, the long part of making an order is knowing what kind of milk the drinks are, how many shots you need, and if you need to steam it or whatever. So if you can have all of that information beforehand, 
you can make five orders at the same time. Right. And then just have them go out. So it might take 10 minutes to do five orders, but they're all done at the same time. You just run them through and they do the next one. So, yeah. Uh, maybe we call it the, the Chick-fil-A method. Yeah. They, <laughs> they are definitely our business role models for efficiency and speed, which is kind of our one of our three core pillars of, of who makes us happy. Yeah, I always ask, do you have any future plans, even though I know we're talking about like <laughs> expansions and stuff yeah. like that, do you have like anything on the near horizon? Of yeah, so Chat State in August will be there, I'm excited to interact with the students again, and the one day we got to actually be open for another grand opening, it was just teachers and faculty, so we didn't even get to interact with the students, oh. so, but now we'll get to interact with everyone. So yeah. super pumped about that. I don't know if you're familiar with Chat State's campus, but we're in the cafeteria, and there's like a side concession stand, kind of walk us to the cafeteria. And so we're taking up two thirds of that, and they still have a hot bar. Um, mm -hmm. So we're right next to the this seating area, and then right next to the collegiate high, which is like where high school high school students kind of do dual enrollment. Right. Um, so we'll be there. We are potentially breaking into the distribution scene for coffee inventory stuff. So like for all the coffee shops in town, if they need to buy like syrups or sauces or cups or lids or whatever, we're gonna have a warehouse for that, a delivery driver. And so we'll be doing that, which is fun. New Wave Coffee is going great. We're about to really ramp up our wholesale and retail offerings for that. We have a couple fun partnerships lined up, some that you'll hear about in a couple weeks. That's uh, super exciting. And then the fun event, we're having our two year anniversary, second week of July, and we're doing a block party here. Yeah. We're gonna invite everyone. We're gonna block off the drive through with food trucks. We're gonna have live music, have tables and chairs out there, and a bunch of fun local people just hanging out. And, uh, it'll be a blast. We also have some fun marketing stuff plans. We might be getting into doing a podcast okay. that's kind of small, local small business related, but it's also still in the works. Is there anything else you want to add? <laughs> mm. I always ask that and I'm like, depending on the person, because that's what's been so much interesting about yeah. this for me is really learning because I'm, I'm interested in the business side of things too. Yeah. So it's very, very neat to talk to all these small business owners yeah. and get like their story of how they started, why they started, you know, what they found worked for them and yeah. stuff. And, Everybody's approach is so different, yeah. yet they're all successful. And that's yeah. what's very inspiring and also just very interesting and yeah. learning. Like, there's there's more than one way to do everything. Like, yeah. <laughs> As we say in the South, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Exactly. It's the worst euphemism ever. <laughs> I, metaphor. I would add, I would be remiss to not mention that we are partnered with Chattanooga Football Club. Uh, which is on our sleeves, which is super fun. Yeah. Uh, we actually have a really cool package coming out with them very soon. That'll be a CFC mug, a uh, CFC co-branded coffee bag that is only going to be able to be bought through this deal. And it's a specific blend made for CFC, a pair of tickets and a loyalty card, um, all in a package deal. That'll okay. come out in a couple weeks. And then we also just partnered with the Lookouts and we have a fifth signature drink, which is super exciting, called Louise Latte. It's a grand slam of our other signature drinks. So it's fun working with those guys. They're all just they're really fun. And if you thought Chattanooga had a really cool local business scene, the local sports scene is insanely crazy. Um, like our Chattanooga Hooligan drink is named after the CFC fans. And if you've never been to a CFC game and watched them, it's, it's an experience in its own right. They have drums and they uh, dress up and get painted and do all this crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so those are fun. We love working with those guys. Yeah, I guess how bad that's my list because I have yeah. not been. <laughs> oh, I should go. I, I love soccer, so I love watching the game, but mm -hmm. honestly, just watching the fans is its own. It's a it's show in and of itself. It <laughs> it's amazing. And the lookouts yeah. too, they have some really cool cool fans, but they don't. Mm -hmm. not, not quite as insane as the Chattel Hooligans. So. <laughs> Uh, and then, yeah, so my other thing I would add is a lot of my business values are derived from two people, uh, Simon Sinek and Gary Vaynerchuk. And so if you're ever interested in like, some fun, interesting business stuff, check out uh, Simon Sinek and Start With Why. You've probably heard of the concept, but uh, he's the second most watched TED Talk. Uh, and it's on 
start with why and leave your principles. And then Gary Vaynerchuk is like, they talk, they say the same stuff that Gary Vaynerchuk says it with like 10 extra F words in there. Um, <laughs> he's, yeah. So there, you should check out them. They have videos and stuff. But, okay. uh, but a lot of inspiration and practices we do is derived from some of their principles and practices. And probably, I haven't heard of either of them, but I, I'm sure the principles I've heard from, because I've dabbled in a lot of different like yeah. webinars and stuff that people have done. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm sure a lot of their principles, because like, a lot of stuff gets yeah. repeated, you know? Like, oh, yeah. like, okay, well, if these 10 people do it, I should probably do it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and they just, they say it in ways that are really easy to understand and really make you think. Mm -hmm. They're just cool guys. Simon Sinek, my cat's name is Simon. Definitely named after him. Wow. Um, <laughs> and that concludes. Oh, wait. Chris has something to add. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That concludes this episode of Behind the Business Chat. Be sure to check out the blog post, which will be a link below, to learn more about Be Caffeinated. And if you didn't already know, I have a podcast version of this Behind the Business Chat as well. The link for that will also be below. <laughs> and another note I know the audio needs improving. And I've got great news. I recently purchased the microphones that I need in order to produce better quality audio for this series. So moving forward, the sound should be better, which I'm really excited about. Also, this was my very first behind the business chat that I recorded. So if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see y'all next week.